And uh, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to speak here today. And uh, so I've had uh, a good lunch and plenty of coffee, so hopefully all you guys have as well to be able to, uh, to listen through this presentation. So um, I've entitled the presentation Critical Materials for a Carbon-Free World, and that's really the focus of the company, uh, Leading Edge Materials. Um, we, uh, we, we've got a lot of things going on at the moment, and, and um, if anyone's had taken a look at our share price, then um, yeah, we've had uh, quite a strong reaction over the last uh, couple of weeks, and um, uh, share price has doubled, and, and volume is up uh, five to ten times. So uh, an, an interesting time to be standing here talking, and I'd, I'd like to just introduce some of the ideas and, and the work that we're doing. We're a dual-listed company uh, in Sweden and in Canada, uh, which requires we have a, a very lengthy disclaimer um, against everything we say. Um, I guess as first introduction, I'd just like to talk about sort of some of the big picture ideas of, uh, of what we do as a company. And um, before I leap into, into exactly uh, the materials that we're focused on, so um, we really are poised for growth in, in the market at the moment. And um, the, our, our background market is growing extremely quickly. Um, we have a first mover advantage um, because of our asset. Um, very close to, to customers who are, are growing very quickly, and, and you'll, you'll know those names. The market is growing strongly enough that we don't need to displace existing suppliers. Um, we have great support from government industry. Um, it's a natural, it's a non-toxic product that we are producing. Um, and in fact, even it's a Nobel Prize winning material. And, and I guess even more curious is that, uh, that everyone in the room here has some on them, um, but they have the Chinese version, not the, uh, uh, not the Swedish version. So what I'm talking about is, is uh, a product called uh, Swedish Natural Graphite. So we are a, a junior mining company. We own a, a mine in central Sweden. And uh, from that mine, we're going to be producing a whole range of graphite products. So we use the term graphite, but really um, it uh, covers a whole range of different materials. So we can see there from the pricing uh, on the right-hand side. So it goes from being uh, very basic raw materials that would sell into the steel industry at $700 a tonne up to super high purity, super high performance materials like graphene that sell for $50,000 per tonne. Uh, all of those materials can be uh, pr produced in Sweden from our, our mine site in, in um, close to Edsbyn. The one that I'll be particularly talking about today is, uh, is the battery anode material. So those little balls. And um, so if I was to put a, um, a scale bar on this, then, then one millimetre would be probably side to side on the room. So, um, they're very small, uh, very high performance materials. So really, it's got nothing to do with the mine site itself. It's got everything to do with what happens to the product after we, we mine it and process it and do all the value add. So Leading Edge Materials is a, um, a, a Swedish Canadian company. Um, we were formed originally in 2011. Um, our original listing was on the, on the, uh, the Canadian market. Uh, we completed a listing here in, a dual listing here in Sweden a little over 12 months ago. Um, most of our shares are still held in Canada. Um, we've more recently seen a lot of good trade coming into the Swedish market as our, our profile has picked up. So our overriding vision of what we do as a company is to be uh, the first European supplier of high-performance graphite anode materials. And, and maybe no one here has heard of graphite anode materials, but um, it, it's the graphite anode that, uh, that you have in your pocket at the moment. And um, so here is an example um, in a small paper bag of, of material that would be sitting in your phone at the moment. And uh, that's the material that, that makes your battery work. And uh, at the moment, that's 100% Chinese produced. Uh, this has been made in, in Sweden. And, um, and over time, we're very optimistic that we'll be able to displace that, uh, that Chinese market. Um, so uh, our vision, I guess, is, um, uh, is to be a first and a leading supplier of, uh, of carbon materials. Um, just overnight, we have just uh, finished a, um, a strategic review. And um, yeah, it's taken uh, about four months to sort of uh, find a pathway forward. And, and really, the company has been made up of, uh, of two different branches. So we, we have assets, which um, particularly is the, the Waxner Graphite mine, um, which is very much development driven. So it's a fully built mine. It needs extra investment to go from low purity materials to high purity, high value materials. But we know what's in the ground. It already exists. Um, and so we just need to do the value add. Um, the other assets that we have as a company, what I would call is discovery driven. Um, I'm a geologist. And, and what we do is go out and we, we look at rocks and we, we look at data and, and we try to find things. So the other parts of the company are discovery driven. Um, 
those two parts of the company haven't really been supporting each other all that well, and uh, we've just taken the decision that we're going to separate out Wax and the Graphite AB. Um, it'll be more of a Swedish company than a Canadian company. Um, it'll be, be managed um, locally and, uh, and be funding itself locally through debt and equity and, uh, and potentially moving forward into an IPO. So, yeah, um, please read the, the press release that came out overnight, and, and that'll give a, a good understanding of, of uh, what we are moving ahead with. So our markets and, and the reason that we're restructuring is that we're, we're really very keen to be focusing on this very high growth battery market. Um, it, it's really a once in a lifetime opportunity in, in terms of uh, a business that has gone from, from nothing to something so very quickly and uh, is expanding uh, really, really fast. And so I've been involved in raw materials for, for close to 30 years and um, really this is the first time where, where industry and mining and, and investors have aligned really so forcefully. Uh, to be able to, uh, to focus on, on really one investment cycle. So when you look at what's happening in Europe in terms of um, uh, battery uh, production, um, really every major country now has a uh, what's called a gigafactory being built. Uh, obviously, you'll be familiar with what's happening in Sweden, um, up in Schleftior with Northolt. Um, that's quite a large example. But uh, the largest of all is this, uh, this project here in, uh, in Germany um, with a, a, uh, an Asian company called CATL. All of those companies will be prospective customers for us. And um, if we're able to capture 10% of that market, that will consume all of the graphite that comes uh, from our mine in Sweden. So uh, it's a very, very big market. Um, looking backwards into the battery industry, and, uh, and this was the manufacturing profile that uh, was happening in, in Q1 2019, so very current. Um, of all the top 10 producers, entirely Asian. No European, um, no North American producer at all, uh, entirely Asian, but that's changing. And, uh, and so those European and uh, North American customers are looking for completely different and new supply chains. So when you see a graph like that, you've sort of got to imagine it's almost too good to be true when you, uh, when you look at um, how big the industry is going to become over the next few years. But uh, that's reinforced by a whole range of different projections um, from the customers, from the automotive industry, and from the battery industry. Um, to look really how big this market is going to become, um, North Vaults Factory, um, so I, I've got the height of that bar correct for what North Vaults Factory in, in Schleftia is going to be. North Vault is going to be a big player in, in Europe, but it's going to be a tiny player on, on the world scale. So uh, there's, there's going to be many, many customers for, um, for a company like ours to be selling to. Um, if it's half, a, half as uh, positive as that, then it still makes many customers for, um, for raw materials. So in the shift to electrification, which, um, yeah, and, and renewable power, I think, um, yeah, uh, almost guaranteed now with, with the amount of support that's going towards it. Really, it's a shift um, from uh, investment in oil and gas to an investment in, in critical materials. It's critical materials that make batteries work and solar panels work and wind turbines work. Um, and without those critical materials, um, yeah, we can't have a, a, a renewable energy cycle. So our, our focus as a business has been entirely on, on those, those little marbles sitting on the, the right-hand side there. And um, over time, uh, not immediately, but over time, as the oil and gas contribution shrinks, um, all of those little marbles have to grow greatly in, in scale and um, become much bigger markets. And so that's where we sit, and, and um, there's a, a range of companies around the world doing the same thing, all of them with, uh, with enough customers to be able to be successful. I guess one of the key things that, that we can see in the shift from, from uh, oil and gas to electrification is that uh, the, the country's involved. So we've got some of the world's superpowers sitting up here on the oil and gas side. Um, on on the battery side, we've got uh, a whole range of, um, of smaller countries, some of them with, uh, with very poor um, human rights records, um, places that uh, are not very sustainable suppliers. Um, that's where Sweden is, is and, uh, and Finland and, and the Nordic region and Europe have great opportunities to be supplying sustainable, first world, transparent, uh, low environmental impact materials into the battery industry. So I've mentioned uh, uh, graphite, and uh, that's, that's been our key focus, but um, I, I guess um, a little bit more broadly, and, and really some of the reason that our share price has jumped up a lot in the last week, is, is the headlines that you can see here. And uh, it, it maybe hasn't been picked up a great deal in the media here, but it's been all over the news, certainly in North America. The trade war between essentially Trump as an individual and, and, and versus China as a nation. And uh, 
the Chinese uh, made a little bit of a pushback on, uh, on raw materials in general and, and rare earths specifically. Um, Leading Edge Materials owns one of Europe's uh, most significant rare earth metals deposits. And, uh, and for that reason, um, we got a whole lot of new shareholders jumping on and, and paying attention to what we're doing as a company. Um, you could change out rare earths for, for cobalt or for lithium or for, for nickel or any other metal as well. And, um, and really, if the, if the uh, supply chain is too concentrated, there's always a supply risk. For Europe, because it, it doesn't really appear as a supplier in anything, um, it's really got to build up its, um, its momentum in terms of supply. So as a, um, uh, on the European spectrum, um, so uh, the European Commission uh, every two years publishes uh, a, a matrix of, of raw materials about what's important to the, uh, to the European Commission. So it's a graph of economic importance, so more important on this axis, um, and the supply risk on this axis, so um, yeah, more challenging supply. So heavy rare earths, because they all come from China, is well up here. Um, the metals down here are very important to European industry and, and natural graphite sits um, uh, kind of in the middle there. So natural graphite is seen as, a, as an at-risk material and it's not because of pencils and, and the steel industry that it was used for in the past, it's, um, it's because of batteries. So at the moment, um, because Europe produces uh, no natural graphite for batteries, um, it's obviously seen as a, a point of risk and a, a place that's being focused on. And yeah, the one second lesson on, on a battery is that uh, yeah, the battery, um, a cross section of a battery, um, the graphite forms the anode, and um, so it's able to to take and release lithium, and uh, and so it allows uh, the battery originally was called a rocking chair battery because it allows um, uh, lithium to come and go and come and go and keep on recycling like that uh, for, for for thousands of times. So uh, yeah, very important critical raw material, and that's why it's been classified on that uh, on that graph. Uh, so in terms of where natural graphite comes from at the moment, um, yeah, we can see on the left-hand chart there it's it's reasonably distributed across the planet. Um, on the right-hand side, however, um, is the chart that shows where where graphite for batteries come from, um, and it's not a it's not a misprint. It's um, it's 100% from China. So there is no other material, and that's why at the start I, w I could confidently say that that your telephones are made with Chinese graphite because there is nowhere else for it to come from. Um, so gradually, there's other companies coming through, and, and like ours in Sweden, um, that will be gradually adding to that pie chart um, as, the, as the industry grows. China wants all of their raw materials for themselves and uh, yeah, very aggressively pursue those materials. Um, so for us in, in leading edge materials, um, yeah, I guess we're, we're sitting here at the, um, the, the top of the tree or the, the bottom of the chain, or however you like to, to call it, I suppose, in that when you look at, at the ability to invest in, in electrification, then you have a whole range of options about where you kind of pick your, your, your spot. Um, I've pulled out a few Swedish or European companies there doing different things in, in different parts of the cycle. Um, for us, we sit here at the very top of the, uh, of the tree and we're delivering down to all those other customers. So from our point of view, yeah, we hope Northvolt is successful, but if, the, if Northvolt isn't successful, there's another North Fault. There's a North Fault in Germany and France and, and, and Poland and the Czech Republic that are coming through who will be our customers. Um, so when we're not so tied to the technology as, uh, as um, our, our customers will be as they get further down that supply chain. But uh, yeah, many good picks um, along that supply chain. So our, our comp uh, competition is not within Europe at the moment. Um, it's entirely uh, within Asia. So our, our graphite mine, and, and this is where, uh, yeah, where we do our work and, and um, what we own in Sweden. And, um, so uh, almost the geographic centre of Sweden there, I suppose, is where the mine sits. Uh, close to the town of Edspin, we have a little base in, in the village of Bolmes. Um, known for bandy is all I've ever been told, nothing else. Um, so it was a mine that was built in, um, uh, in the 1990s. Um, it produced uh, for a short amount of time for the steel industry. Um, it didn't make much money, it was closed down, and, uh, and we purchased it from, um, yeah, from a bank that was, that was holding it. Um, our vision is to, to restart that mine, uh, not for the steel industry, but for the lithium-ion battery market. Uh, we can see where North Vault sits, um, yeah, not too far away. Um, we have uh, all of the infrastructure and all the materials on site there at the moment uh, that we need to be producing um, the lower value graphite, our, as we look forward, we need to, need to be investing in the materials and the processes to be producing the high-value graphite. 
so yeah, a nice little aerial picture of our mine. So um, yeah, uh, a very simple process and, and a very small mine on a, on a Swedish scale. Um, in fact, it's 0.1% uh, it's of ITIC, which is Sweden's largest mine. So this is a, a, a baby in, in Swedish terms. So when the mine operated in the past, it was producing um, uh, materials for the steel industry. So anytime you see molten steel, that's being held by graphite because graphite has a very high melting point. Uh, 2001, it closed. The prices were very low, um, competing with, with Chinese markets and, and really uh, was very uh, uninspiring. Today, all of our research is done on the value add and uh, we have no intention of producing materials for the steel industry. So uh, we are investing in a small furnace um, as a, what we call a demonstration plant, which is a, a, a test scale um, facility. Um, we put our material through the, the demonstration plant and that produces a, a whole range of materials that have, um, have 10 times the value of the stuff that the mine previously produced. Um, so that's materials for lithium-ion batteries, it's materials, uh, very fine powders that can be used for uh, additives in, in paint and, and heat resistant and um, uh, the material that, that is shown there as foils um, is heat shielding. Um, again, you will be you, in the laptop here, we'll have a, um, a graphite sheet within it that will be uh, distributing the heat and stopping the battery having one hot point and, and distributing the, the temperature across the back. And of course, some graphene as well, and um, and that's in collaboration with uh, with a company called Graphmatech. Uh, Graphmatech is backed by uh, Jane Vollerud and uh, ABB, and uh, so we're working in partnership with them on on graphene products as well. I guess the uh, um, one of one of the great beauties of this little furnace is that um, it runs on uh, on Swedish hydroelectricity, and um, at, at the moment, this will be installed on the mine site. But as we as we expand, we'll be moving into northern Sweden, where where power prices are cheaper. Um, it means that the emissions from the, uh, from the facility are extremely low. So we can be producing um, graphite anode materials with a, probably the world's lowest carbon footprint, um, provided to Northolt, who, whose promise is to be producing batteries with the world's lowest carbon footprint. Um, so it's a very good tie-up with them as a customer. So looking, looking forwards from where we are today, so um, we've been working for, for quite a while on, uh, on what we call the high purity project and, and working out how to add value to all our materials to go from low value to high value. So we're now sitting here in 2019 and um, we've, we've done all the, the work we need to do at a, a small scale um, and we're now ready to go into the larger scale. Um, when we speak to customers of battery materials, um, they're obviously an extremely cautious group because of the safety issues that surround batteries. Um, they want to be receiving very large samples of material so that they can build a thousand batteries, not just five batteries, and uh, they can do the, the very, very rigorous stress testing on batteries and materials that's required to make sure it's safe. So we need to have a process that, um, that we're able to go to, to large scale. So that's what we're working on at the moment. So the research and development is, is product development. Uh, we then move to demonstration scale, which uh, will be producing 100 kilograms per day of, uh, of graphite materials. Um, that's enough to be supplying into Volkswagen and Daimler and Northvolt and, and BMW. All of those companies will be able to receive a large enough volume of material to know that our materials will perform. Um, once we have been operating at a demonstration plant for qualification, we'll then be making the, the investment decision to go to a, a mine scale furnace and, um, and that will uh, be producing 10,000 tonnes per year of, uh, of graphite products. So as I said, we're really the, the key to what we're doing is, uh, yeah, is getting in front of cost customers with our materials and, and making sure we, we qualify for lithium ion batteries. So the, the stages that we've passed through is, is really uh, yeah, very small scale materials, uh, gradual expansion. Uh, we produced 10 kilograms of materials this year, uh, sorry, last year, um, and we're now looking at ways to, to be financing the production of 100 kilograms per day. Um, and then that material goes straight into the customer's process. Um, so for, for Northvolt, um, it would go to Vesteros or to Schleftior. They will use that as their product and build batteries and, and then uh, they will come back and tell us how that performs and, and what modifications are needed and, and how to improve if needed or, or they become customers immediately. So uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'm, I'm running out of time, I imagine, and, um, and so really, um, just to, to touch base again on the strategic review, so we, we're um, uh, yeah, looking at ways now to, to take wax and graphite um, uh, out of leading edge materials and, and give it its own life here in Sweden. Um, so 
uh, direct funding into that uh, into that company from um, hopefully Swedish investors. Um, so that will allow us to accelerate, and, and yeah, we're very confident the market is uh, is there and growing, and um, and so we would like to be able to uh, to move faster and, and execute uh, far more securely than we've been doing over the last couple of years. So that's our motivation um, with the strategic review, and, and we'll be delivering on that in the in the next few months. And, and um, yeah, stay tuned to that story. Um, so I guess yeah, in, in summary, um, yeah. We're, we're sitting within a sector that uh, that is extremely fast moving and, and growing at an amazing pace. Um, Europe is is number two in terms of uptake of uh, electric vehicles, only behind China, and uh, and China is supported heavily by subsidies. Um, our product, the graphite, um, is uh, is a, a very key component of, of lithium-ion batteries. Um, every battery at the moment is built with that existing technology, um, is using 16% uh, graphite, so yeah, a very key part of the battery. Uh, far more, far more than lithium. It's about 10 times as much graphite as lithium in a, in a lithium-ion battery. Supply chain security, as we've seen in this last last few weeks, is getting um, enormous attention, and um, and that's uh, a, a very strong selling point for Sweden. There's there's very few countries on on the planet that are as trusted as a, a supply chain partner as Sweden is, and uh, and so yeah, uh, as we we implement and and uh, execute on our, our business model, then um, we can see ourselves producing around 20% of uh, of the demand. Within Europe, and um, and and that makes a, a very substantial business. Um, last slide, and, and then uh, open for questions. And, and really, um, yeah, it's uh, th there's there's many reinforcing factors, I guess, in in what we talk about here. But uh, the European Commission has been extremely active in um, in trying to attract uh, battery customers and the battery industry into Europe. And, and really, the comment was made: uh, it, it's too big to miss out on. Um, so Maros Sefcovic has been a, a great supporter, and, and so he was the, the person who came up with the idea of an EU battery alliance. Leading Edge Materials is a, is a founding member of that, which means we're, we're one or two phone calls away from really every battery industry player inside of Europe. So um, a couple of weeks ago um, at a, an EU battery alliance meeting in Brussels, um, really the, the, uh, the focus moved from not just producing batteries, but really committing to a whole supply chain. Uh, sustainable, predictable, clean, um, building better batteries really is what the, the European Commission wants to do. And um, yeah, um, they have financing plans to, uh, to support that. And uh, yeah, obviously we're sitting in a very good position to, uh, to be a partner in that. And uh, yeah, that's about all from, from me today. And uh, yeah, please um, yeah, send me a message or uh, yeah, get in touch through the website. And uh, yeah, very happy to answer any questions at any time. And, uh, and uh, any questions now as well. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mark, for a very interesting presentation. Also good uh, time-wise. I'm going to ask you one question I was uh, thinking about. So you hold a first mover advantage in a rapidly growing market. And uh, I was wondering if, if you think it's uh, sustainable, because often these markets uh, tend to attract uh, competition, mm. and often they have great resources if, if the market is expanding and is big in size and so on. Uh, so, so do you think this uh, is uh, sustainable, uh, or what, what does the future hold, you think? Uh, yeah, I think um, yeah, the, the graph of uptake of electric vehicles um, is, is very optimistic. And um, I, I think, uh, like most of those things, they take longer than planned. However, um, e even if it's half as good as on that graph, then, uh, then it's um, multiple customers and, and a great step up in demand. So the graphite market at the moment is really quite small. It's entirely Asian, and um, so it's it's crying out for um, yeah for a lot of new customers to come in. Um, I think our first mover advantage really is about having a mine site that has already been built. Um, so I've been working in in mining for uh, yeah for about 30 years, and uh, over those 30 years, opening mines has become dramatically more different difficult, and uh, it, you need a lot more information on on groundwater and impact and social impact and um, and so instead of things that used to take two or three years, they now take five to six years. And Sweden is a great example of that, that, um, that yeah, you need a lot of data to open a mine. So there is no shortcut when you're opening mines and producing raw materials. Um, so we have a, a natural lead there because we already have a, a fully built mine with permits in place to operate. And um, so that's a, yeah, a lead okay. that really can't be, uh, can't be beaten. Okay. And uh, when do you think you will start uh, profiting from this position and your uh, current initiatives? Um, yeah, so I, I guess our, our, our plans looking forward are, uh, are subject to raising additional finance and subject to technical success. Um, so both of those things we, we always need to be mindful of. Um, if we uh, are able to build a demonstration plant and, and we find the customers from those materials, uh, then middle of 2021 is when we'll be starting to produce uh, 
graphite anode on a commercial scale. Okay, and uh, you were also appointed uh, as a CEO quite recently in January. Uh, what what are your primary goals now, both thinking uh, short term and uh, longer term? Uh, sure, yeah, no, I've been involved with this this project, um, yeah, really since. Uh, uh, you've been for a company for a long time, I should say. Yes, also. yes. So since the beginning, I've been involved with this project, so I know it very well, and, and really. We're, we've been around a few circles with it, trying to find ways to, to add the most value. And, um, and the, the increase in electrification um, really is something that uh, is, is just so enormous and is, is, is being talked about across the whole globe. Um, to execute on this project and, and, and get customers and get really high quality materials um, with a really low carbon footprint is something that yeah, I think we'll be very proud to have achieved. Mm. Um, yeah, I also obviously as a, as a geologist, I enjoy going out and looking at new projects and finding new things, and I'm very excited about the work we're doing in Romania, as a, as another project, and um, for that reason, and that's about the discovery side. Um, yeah, but this one's about uh, making a real difference, and um, and uh, yeah, both for Sweden and and uh, for Europe as well. Okay, and uh, last question. I noticed you mentioned it earlier, uh, the trade war between the United States and China. H how does that uh, affect uh, your company and uh, in a positive or in a negative way? Uh, I think entirely positive um, because um, yeah, the, the influence of, of China in these markets is, uh, is extremely strong. The, uh, the Chinese government and Chinese industry looked out an awful lot further than, than what Western companies were doing. Um, so they have been around the planet buying raw materials uh, for the last 10 years. They've been buying graphite mines, they've been buying copper and cobalt and nickel and, and uh, either securing the offtake agreements or buying the mines themselves. Yeah. Australia, Canada, um, South America. Um, so um, they would like to keep the materials for themselves. Uh, they want to be selling batteries to Europe. They don't want to be selling um, graphite to Europe. Um, they want to be getting as much or in fact, they probably want to be selling electric cars to, to Europe. Um, so. Uh, to be able to, to build up a supply chain that sits outside of China um, has tremendous value, I think. So um, uh, any time there's, there's uh, ructions between the US and, and China, uh, we see it through a whole range of share prices will all, all lift up as alternate suppliers to China. Okay, that's uh, all very clear. Yeah, I think we're we'll run, run out of time. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming here today and presenting. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you.